Hey there and welcome back to our GTM for Beginners course. My name is Julian and in this lesson we are going to talk about how you can track conversions with the help of Google Tag Manager. Now what is a conversion all about? Conversions are actions that a user would take on your website, but not just any action, actually important actions that you want the user to take. Think of running ads on Facebook or on Google and you want to know how many people actually clicked on the ads obviously, but then also how many people converted, took the action that you wanted them to take. And these actions can really be very diverse. You could track a form submit as a conversion or when somebody buys something on the store or when they read through an article. And this is where Google Tag Manager can come in because it can help us to track all of these different interactions and fire our tag so the data is received by our tools and they know about the conversion. So let's dive back into our website and I'll show you how to set this up. So here inside of Google Tag Manager, let's first go over to our website and take a look at what we are trying to do here. We have a online store. It would be good to track actually the online purchases, but I want to go with a different conversion here, a form conversion. So I'm just going to go over to this website form here and it's a standard contact us form. So let's test this out, put a message in and submit this. This is the interaction that we actually want to track. Once the user has submitted the form, he goes to a form thank you page. And that is when we want to fire our conversion tag. And when it comes to firing tags, we actually need to have a trigger to trigger then our tag. So we can already create that trigger inside of Google Tag Manager. Go over here to triggers and click on new. And now we are going to create our first real trigger inside of Google Tag Manager. We go to the configurations and then here we have all the different events that we can choose from to track interactions on our website. And we'll go with the page view since the user after he submits the form goes to a thank you page. We can use that page view as our triggering point. Now you can refine a trigger by going here on the trigger virus on some page views. And now you have the ability in this filter menu to choose from different variables and determine when your tag should actually fire. Now I'm going to go with the page path here that should contain and let's go back to our page here. This form. Thank you. So once that is true, our trigger should turn true and then fire our tag. So let's name our trigger. I always do the abbreviation for page view and then our form thank you. So I actually know what it is later on. I'll save this and now we have a new trigger created. Now a trigger cannot be tested by its own. It actually needs to be attached to a tag itself. So let's go ahead and actually fire a event tag to Google Analytics 4. We need a new tag for this. So we'll click here on new and then under tag configuration, we go to Google Analytics. Here we have the Google Analytics GA4 event tag. So we'll choose our measurement ID. Hopefully you already wrote it down in your tag plan. So I have mine here and then we have an event name. You might know that there are different ways of naming your events inside of Google Analytics. There are, for example, recommended events that Google Analytics 4 understands quite well. So you might want to use one of these pre-made events that Google Analytics understands if they fit, or you could come up with your own ones. And for me, I'm just going to go with our form submit as the event name. And that's what I want to send over to Google Analytics for. Now as a trigger, I can already choose our pre-made trigger right here and give this whole thing a name. So this is a GA4 tag. We're firing an event for our form submit. Let's save this and we can actually try this out. Let's go to preview. Let's put in our form page here. So here we are. We are connected to the tag assistant. Let's fill out our form. And maybe just to show you in the tag assistant itself, you can still see here under, for example, container loaded. We have our Google Analytics 4 tag firing, our Metapixel firing, but not yet our form submit. So this tag hasn't fired and we actually can click on it and look at the firing trigger right here and see that it didn't turn true because one of the conditions, our page path containing form thank you, didn't come to pass and therefore the whole trigger failed. So that is great news because this is the negative case. Let's go ahead and actually submit this. And now in the tag assistant, we exit out here. You see here our new page view under container loaded. We'll find our GA4 event form submit has now fired because this condition turned true. And this is now sending data over to our Google Analytics. You can obviously also see this inside of our debug view. So let's go here into the debug view. 
And here we go, we have a form submit that came in to our GA4. Now this is just an event for Google Analytics 4, but you can turn it into a conversion or a key event as it's now called. So Google Analytics 4 recognizes this as a very important event and will put it into your conversion report. So let's go under key events right here. And here, unfortunately, we don't have yet listed our event that we just sent in, form submit. It eventually will show up in this menu here and then you can mark it as a key event. This actually takes 48 hours, so we would need to wait in order to finish this demo right here. But what you can also do is go to new key event and type it in here. So we could put in form submit. Make sure that this is exactly what you are sending over. Best is to double check actually inside of GTM to see or copy it over so you don't make a mistake when you put that in here. Let's save this and this will then be added right here and marked as a key event. So this is how you can track conversions inside of Google Analytics 4. You can also then with this information send them onto Google Ads if you have that connected for example. As a second example, we also want to send this over to our Meta Pixel, and Meta actually also has some standard events that they would use. And one that fits quite well is the actual contact event, where we just send over contact and Facebook would recognize that as a important event. So let's go over to Google Tag Manager again and let's come up with a new Meta Pixel. So I'm gonna go to new tag configuration and as we scroll down, we have the Facebook pixel right here. We need to put in our pixel ID, which I have saved up right here. And then we have here the standard events and I want to go with contact right here. Then we need to choose a trigger and our trigger will again be our page view form. Thank you. So this will be our meta event contact. So let's save this and then preview this again. I'm gonna fill this out. All right. And in our tag assistant, we should now see that not only our GA4 event tag has fired, but also our meta event tag. And we can make sure by looking into the meta pixel helper. This is a Chrome extension that you can install on your Chrome browser. And we see here the contact information or the data point of the contact was sent over to meta. Obviously you could also go through the testing process. So here we have our contact point as well. Now, any of these event data points that came into Metapixel can be later on also used for your conversion analysis. So you can basically see this as a conversion already if you choose it inside of your ads manager, for example. So just to quickly recap, we have now set up our conversions inside of Google Tag Manager, a form submit as a conversion. And we are sending data over to Google Analytics 4 and to Meta. And we reused one of our triggers that we have set up especially for that interaction. And this time we didn't choose the all pages trigger because we didn't want to track all page views as a conversion, but only that specific page once the user has submitted the form. So we set up a trigger for this and this trigger can then be reused on many other different tags that we want to also send conversion data over. So you might see already that this makes things way easier because we only had to set up one trigger and not multiple triggers for this conversion. Now don't be fooled, we have only set this up right now on our browser and only with our login because we are still in the preview mode right here. Actually, if you wanted to take this to production to the live users, so it's actually working on our website, we again need to click the submit button here and add a version. Then click on publish. And now this will be added to your website. So actually your users will get tracked with all of that sweet information about your conversions. So this is it with this lesson. Next lesson, we are going to talk about event tracking specifically because there are way more interactions that you can actually track with Google Tag Manager. And that's actually the fun part where you can install custom tracking on your website with any interactions that are detectable by a browser. So stay tuned for the next lesson. My name is Julian and I'll see you in the next one.